money again. All good. Looks like we're live now. All right. Welcome back to episode 21 or 22, depending on who's counting, of uh, Drawing Blood. If Chris is counting, it's, it's if it, I, I'm not, over not 40. 40. 22. <laughs> 22 to 44. Uh, it's your inside look to the animation process, at least, of our top-down adventure, hashtag blood. Um, last week, we were starting to do a little more NPC characters, kind of in the hallway and stuff. Oh, hey, wow. Arrow well, Will's here already. Thanks All right, I'm glad. It shows initiative. Maybe you can help us <laughs> pick who we should animate today. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I'm going to go in. This is a classroom right here where kind of trying to fill out each room before any of like the danger really happens and all the enemies come out. So it to feel like kind of a, just an average day in this kind of manic um, school. So I'm going to open up what we started last week. I got some stuff finished. Hallway, and I'll show you what we did there. Well, hold on, that one's actually on my desktop. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Bob's recording on his uh, microphone too, so if anything's a little wonky or echoey, we yeah, think we figured know. it out. And even if it does, I don't know how to fix it, so. <laughs> um, but feel out. free to ask him any questions too, even though he's not on camera. He is in the room. So this is what I set up for the Twitch video today, and this is uh, some characters we put in the hallway. Some of them you might recognize from the bus scene and stuff too, we just kind of repurposed them. And, you know, in video game animation, I think that's more than fine. So I'm just going to turn off the background and show you what we did. Okay, so we started with just this little guy here last week, and this is sort of what we had. We finished him last week, a couple hours. Being a, yes, exactly. <laughs> Just in there, it's, it's pre-vampire uh, days when you first start the game. Though, uh, we, we decided that um, it, it hits the fan pretty quick, though. By the time you start playing, you'll be fighting vampires in 15 minutes. So, we Chaos have this guy. Chaos 2 is this year again. What's that? Chaos 2 is oh, this year again. Oh, hey! Good to see you at Chaos 2. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on Thursday. We have uh, obligations in this... New York City tomorrow, uh, where we're actually showcasing Blood and a few other films at a yeah, uh, film festival we spent sponsor. I'll actually, we can, you should post too, that, yeah. and Bob's going to post that stuff. If you guys are in the city, the tickets are free. Stop by, say hi to us, enjoy some really cool films. Uh, we have a few in there. We um, have we a surprise film in there, too. And you can also have the chance to play some Blood. Set it up in here. It's called Animation Anarchy. Yes. Uh, it used to be called Midsummer Night Tunes. And we're going to showcase blood for, I guess, like maybe an hour and a half, two hours before mm -hmm. the showing in the lobby. And then I think we might even do a little bit after if we have time. Yeah, so. if you guys are around after, we'll stick around. And Cody's going to be there. Andrew will be there for a little bit. Uh, we don't have our writer, Greg, but we have another indie game guy with us, too. Our friend Dong Lee, who's making a game. He's just going to be with us. He's not going to showcase his game. But he's well into the indie game scene, too. So what I usually do with these sprites is, um, when they're interacting with each other, I try to coordinate the frames a little bit. So you can see this guy starts losing his cool and cries. So I had this character sort of react in that way. So he's kind of watching him, and then he's a little skeptical. And then it all cycles. So they all have the same exact frame. So 85 frames for him. 85 frames for him. So they'll always loop and we'll keep them in tandem like that. I love to. I'm nowhere near New York. Oh, yeah. No, it, we're. Well, are you going to be in Pennsylvania <laughs> in a couple weeks? Oh, we'll be there too. <clears throat> um, Philly's, I guess, somewhere near New York now. Yeah, that's pretty close. Where are you from? The official release. Oh, oh. Arrow Will, you're going to be waiting so long. <laughs> um. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting there. there. We'll, we'll have a there. demo soon. So I kind of just tried to make... I like to keep it sort of like a where's wall, though, when I do these things. So I'll just keep all the animation kind of not, not overlapping each other too much. Uh, I try to tell little stories, you know, so we have some cheerleaders kind of 
pining after the handsome quarterback and all that stuff and so you can see I kind of just duplicate them then I can change the color of the hair and add some um, little details that stand away from the original one. Oh, we got is that Frank Summers this year? Oh, Frank. Frank. used to work with Frank at uh, oh. Einstein's. Oh, do you remember Bob Frank? Is He's that's not Frank? I think so. That's him. That's Frank. Oh, where are you working now, Frank? Was he teaching SV? Are you teaching SV? Are you gonna come tomorrow? <laughs> If that's it, this might be the... If you're an SBA, uh, we'll be at the theater tomorrow. So stop by and play the game. He's the one that's teaching everybody harmony. We're going to have to go oh, to his. Really? We're going to have to have him teach us harmony. Can you get us a free copy, more importantly? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I kind of do the... Uh, I don't know what it's really called, but I always call it like the Fleischer uh, ease and ease out, where, you know, in the old Fleischer cartoons, you know, see the dancing flowers kind of always had this nice ease in, ease out every time they kind of pump up and down. And when I'm not sure what to do with an idol, I find that's sort of a great way to kind of keep it moving and keep it fun and bubbly. And I separated the eyes on her, so I could do the blink like that. And then everything's just coordinated the same way. I kind of stare stuff in the foot. Right now, working from home, also doing a freelance. Oh, I was going to oh, ask, wow, ask about that, actually. That was amazing, that stuff yeah. you posted the other day of the, the Turtles animation. They did a great job with that. Uh, I, I love the timing of the animation and all of that. Uh, the camera moves are excellent. It feels like a real nice homage to um, the old Turtles and all the action anime and all that stuff. That's a really nice feel to it. And... Uh, uh, I know a lot of people, um, you know, when you reboot a series, a lot of fan boys or fan people get upset, but I've only heard ne nothing but great things about that one. Which is usually not the case for no, the, it's not uh, the Nickelodeon. Not, <laughs> not the case for Nickelodeon. Um, so I changed her hair. The hearts are all the same. Uh, she's from the boss squad. It looked like she could, um, check the book on the guy there. Looked like she could be in the hallway, kind of playing on the phone. Nothing too special here. We got this guy playing on his phone. So the clicks are backwards here, where it says click, 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 but when I flipped it on this side. So anytime we use verbiage, we're gonna have to sort of keep them separate from the sprite. Got these football players jumping up and down. A little homage to kind of those Mega Man villains, where you just see the eyes of the helmet. Kind of trying for that. It's going to do a small amount of work on it, but it's a great project to work on. Plus, coming along. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I'm glad um, you're enjoying it so far. We're enjoying making it. And I got the concussion twins over here, kind of bonking their heads. And again, that just kind of mirrors the same exact animation. And again, Bob sort of reminded me when the end. Um, the Super Mario, uh, the one from Super Nintendo, the first game that came out on that, they had football characters that when you bounce on their head, they kind of twist their head back and forth, kind of like they're dazed. And I did this last night, not even thinking about that, even like with the football players too. So subconsciously, I have video games on the brain. So we're doing that, and you can see, then I'll just duplicate this uh, symbol, change the color, and change a little accents here and there and that's the way we get a lot of mileage out of these sprites so if we need a third guy I could just change the color or if we're changing if it's an opposing team I could change the color of the suit so you know that's all kind of monotonous stuff that we don't need to really get into got this guy jumping jumping in the puddle he's from the bus too I just took away the smoke from the bus which I, I'll show you here so I just guided that layer Added some water, and then he's jumping in the puddle. We got Kristoff. You guys seen this one? This was a while ago, but this is the Fleischer ease and ease out, kind of looking around angry. Another ease and ease out, even with that motion, and then kind of back to normal. So I try to cycle all these, and I don't try. I try to time them all different too. So the longer you extend the timeline, the more you can look at it. And again, sort of like a where's ball though, tiny town kind of thing. Which brings us to... Oh, wait, it's 
the classroom. So I started filling out this classroom this morning. None of these are animated yet, so I kind of wanted to get a feel of who was going to be in the classroom. You can walk into the classrooms right away before you really get into the quests and all the villains and stuff. So we wanted to fill some of them out just so it feels like it's between classes and stuff. So we got kids sitting here waiting for the class to start and they're going to all need their little idle animations too. So nothing's animated yet. So I'm going to start with the teacher. He's almost the focal point um, when it really boils down to it because this is the background. So uh, it's hard to see the whole thing. So that's Becky. This is Bob's hard work goes in. So he'll be straight ahead. Um, we'll likely have a talking animation for him, I'm guessing. Or you could, you know, we're, we're a little skeptical of who's going to be talking and stuff, though. Um, uh, you know, I know the uh, when you initially play a game, I think um, you'll want to talk to everyone, though we'll have only like talk bubbles over the people you can talk to. Because right now we have around 75 characters that we need to <laughs> animate. So I, I, and we still have the villains and stuff. So I'm going to start with him. I called him. Mr. Owens, idle. Um, so what I would do is start with the torso. So his torso's here, and again, when I'm not sure what to really do, I'll do well one second cycle. I'm gonna ease and ease out. Uh, thirteen for thirteen being the low point or the high point, depending on what you're going for. And twenty uh, for twenty-five, which would actually cycle back in the first second, be the first frame again. So we're gonna. Uh, maybe we're going to raise him up, actually. Uh, the reason why I want to keep a lot of space um, around this area. Oops, wrong color. Around this area, because that's a different layer. So we have a lot of place for him, his arm, to kind of write what he's writing on his desk. So where I usually start from the up pose and go down, I'm going to go from the down pose and go up. What do you guys think of the Trover's Save the Universe, that's a recent game? I don't, I've never heard of the game. Um, I have a real appreciation for anyone who puts in the time and dedication to make any game. Um, I try not to be a game snob at all, but uh, if it's something that's super animated, I'm, I'm all for it too. So I'll have to look that in. Uh, Biggie uh, six. Hmm? Two of us. There we go. Yeah, we'll put it online for a second. Well, hold on. Oh, it's from Rick and Morty. Oh, it's Rick and Morty? It. Oh, okay. Is it 3D? That was about 3D. Oh, that's 2D in it, though. Yeah. I assume it's for adults and stuff, too, if it's a Rick and Morty. It reminds me of Rick and Morty stuff. I'll have to check it out. I don't know. Uh, I don't get to play as many games as I Especially not would like. adult games as much at home. Not with, no. Not with uh, two kids around. No, we each have two kids and stuff, and they're both pretty young and impressionable, so it's hard to play any games that I I would like. Though we do have Red Dead Redemption here, which we try to, we try to sneak in every now and then. When we're getting busy. But uh, it was a busy week again, so. So I'll change the volume of them here. Thin him out a bit. The ears will go down. Since he's sort of twisting his head up, the ears should go down. But the shirt can go up a little bit. Alright, Summers is here. That's so cool. Goes up. So when you hit loop playback. Have that sort of timing, and it's at. Uh, I do everything at 400 percent. So what you'll see on the screen is at a 25 percent ratio. This is the line weight that will be true to what you see on the screen. And I always work big, so it kind of really minimizes any mistakes that you might do. All right, so let's clean this guy up. I use the second to last brush. Uh, this is Flash MX, which. Uh, Maybe Frank Summers would know, but a lot of you newcomers, <laughs> uh, that's sort of the predecessor to Adobe Animate. 
I don't um, know if Frank would know that one actually. I think we used we were using CS3 still. Oh, the were you? Lines, I like CS3 too, though. CS3 was a pretty reliable. Yeah, no, that that only started crashing a few times a day, not seven. So let's see, the years go down. And I also like these thick brushes because I don't press as hard, um, which is completely psychological, I think. Because when I have a thinner brush, I seem to press harder. Like I want it to be thicker or something. He started on five. On five. Ooh, CS5 ooh, or five. No, no like flat, flat five. five. Like that's. Oh. Did they even have like F6 and F7 yet? Like in that, I I remember I remember hearing people love the way that grew too though. I think I started on five. Yeah, flash. <laughs> no, when I used to sit next to a guy at um, I used to work at this place called Funny Garbage. He used to talk about Flash Five all the time, the way I kind of talk about Flash MX now. Uh, I remember thinking, I was like, "Get with the times, old man." And now I, <laughs> now I am the old man. That's everybody does that. No, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see um, what the Adobe Animate generation does with whatever Adobe uh, ruins in the future. <laughs> Uh, it was a uh, that was a fun job. I I, I still uh, stay in contact with a lot of the people that I was working with at the time. We were working on a Disney pilot called Catbot, and it never made it to air. Um, what a production! <laughs> oh, oh, we got Jet in the house. Jet. Oh, here. Jet. <laughs> <laughs> the last <laughs> and, uh, I don't know about that. He's dragging one poor I, bastard. I, but I also got Bob and, <laughs> and Cody has to open open stuff with it. The best part is I got Flash MX for a hundred bucks, uh, probably twelve years ago, and I it doesn't have like you know I just, I just have the code for it, so I just like I can install it on any computer and it's. I mean, man, did that pay for itself, and and you know, four hundred times over. Frank, Frank remembers Catbot. I oh, uh, you remember? I didn't get the pleasure of seeing Catbot. I've only heard I, about well, God, I wish I could there was see about it. eleven of us who saw the whole thing to its entirety. <laughs> it was That's kind of right. It was one of those productions, and if you, anyone works in the industry long enough, I think everyone will kind of find themselves in the situation where it gets there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of people pulling you in a lot of different directions you get a note one day that contradicts the other and I, all, I kind of all kind of relegated to a sign of troubled waters when you start kind of having these little meetings and there's murmurs around the office about what's going to happen, and oh, actually, we're changing the cat to a robot. No, it's an alien. You hear a lot of that kind of stuff. By the way, that's that's what I heard. That's not something I made up. Um, that's an exact sentence I heard. And then all of a sudden, it was just like, like um, Wall Street, uh, uh, 1929. <laughs> and everyone's out of a job on a Tuesday, and then I, I we're all out drinking on Wednesday. I had the one that was uh, Nate the Great, where I got. No, I know. Came in on a Monday with like I came from at the time <laughs> my wife was my girlfriend and she was living in Philly, and I came back, so I had my bag of clothes with me. Oh, I love this story. And we had to go into the office, and it was Jeff Noodleman was telling us about. Uh, he just kind of was like, "Well, this is that's it." And then we went back, they locked out all of our computers, we couldn't get any of our files or anything, and I was so tempted to steal a Cintiq and just leave my, my, I, dirty, I, my dirty laundry on the... I still <laughs> think that would have been a completely good separate oh, package. I would have. No, a lot of, there's a lot of those sort of stories, especially kind of floating around New York. Now I can't speak for the L.A. side of things, but um, New York, there was a few of those sort of all of a sudden productions halted. I feel like I mean, Mike Carlo was always on this. Mike Carlo, there's a few people who have 
If you were on a show with Mike Carlo, there was a good or chance. Or in Jared, Jared Deal. Deal yeah. Jared Deal had that kind of touch, too, where he was just... <laughs> Two of the most talented people. Oh, geez, I know. They just, just had the worst luck on shows. Now, a funny story about the funny garbage thing, uh, debacle, was um, I was offered to stay on staff at Funny Garbage along with Jared Deal, who stayed. So it was Jared and I and uh, uh, our... My classmate Phil Rinda and I. Phil Rinda is very big in the animation scene. He's sort of running most of Netflix now. <laughs> I'm guessing it. So he didn't stay. So I guess me and Jared made the wrong choice by staying. Boy, <laughs> I wouldn't have had this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I wouldn't have felt bad for anyone too. Well, the thing is, then it's just a bun It's a ghost yard the next day with just a bunch of computers not turned on. Though, I guess you could probably sell them. No, we did that, uh... We all went out. But I'll have to say, I, I, Frank, I don't know if Frank feels the same way, but I felt like um, Little Einstein's was the most well-oiled machine yeah, I, to I the like point that. where it was I was bored shitless there and I didn't know what to do with myself. We would finish work so early. And then you would just spend days just sitting around scouring the internet for something to watch. That was like pre. Everything and that was, was pre on like pre YouTube. I just remember YouTube becoming a thing, and it's like there was not enough to watch in a in a day. No, that's I love that idea though that you could kind of go on cruise control with productions. I find not enough people playing ahead enough to do that. No, Little Einsteins is a night like. You just, you would get a bunch of poses with them and you would just animate the poses that were already pre-animated. So there was no, you know, there was, uh, no, and, 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 but, you know, you had hundreds of animations, so you didn't have to feel like, you know, it was too repetitive, but it was just something where you would only animate something new if you truly needed it. Where now I feel like it's a different approach. It's just like the idea of a library system seems almost foolish because you know, the writers we'll will go there whatever they want, do, yeah, do whatever they want. Well, let's do another crowd shot. You know, well, let's do a Dutch angle of a crowd shot. <laughs> okay. The same amount of money we're getting, though, right? Yeah, okay, cool. No, no it was perfect, because they would write... I think kids Like, Frank and those there. guys did the drawn stuff so they would only get a couple of um, animations per episode that were new yeah and then the rest of it was a library and we just plugged and how it. many episodes have there been it did, like, I think it was two full seasons but I mean there's still I know I also around. would like to tell everyone sort of know your audience no well the, well the, and and uh, teenage Green Ninja Turtles like it it calls for a lot of action, so you know you can't really repeat that stuff. But something for like kids, or you know, a little Einstein's audience, where you know you're catering to two-year-olds to four, say. We, you know, that no two-year-old standing up. It's like that's the same mouth they used in the last scene. You know, no one's doing that. So let's kind of know the audience and then cater the production around it. Meanwhile, anime fans are like going nuts if. You know, it's not in between the right or something. Yeah. So that's a different, well, a different the, crowd. Well, yeah, but the, the Ninja Turtle crowd say yeah. is like they would appreciate a nice action shot. Like they could truly appreciate that. So it's sort of, I don't know. No, I, I just a big proponent of know the audience and then, you know, cater the production thusly. Because it's you know we're storytellers by trade, so. Not every story is told the same way. But, uh, I don't know. Try to convince a producer that. And well, if, if the producer ever changes their mind by what, by way of an artist, someone let me know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is just a classic ease in and ease out. Now I can reverse these frames once I color it. Um, now if he had like a big quaff of hair or something, I would do 
uh, different in-betweens for the um, back part of it just because I would want secondary or I would separate the hair and kind of um, match cut it in thusly. But since he sort of keeps his uh, hair close to the scalp and there's nothing that really requires secondary. Now I could have done some like floppy ear stuff but his ears are, aren't really sticking out too far. And I do that with the vampires a lot. Um, yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Boom, 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 boom. How much of the horror genre are we wanting in the game? Ah, uh, it's gonna be very. It's gonna be very vampiric. That's for sure. And yeah, I think it's we, gonna be a very '80s take on. Yeah, we horror. want to keep it like kind of cute but violent. So you know, I I'm not a giant fan of violence for for violence sake. But like when we do it in a style that's sort of cartoony, I feel like you could get away with more. Okay, so um, I did this guy kind of popping in. Here's what ease and ease out. Okay, so this is the symbol. So you can see the ears do different things right there. Got the foot kind of doing different things. So that would be an example of where the ears are kind of moving on their own accord. So that's like a secondary thing. The vampires have these pointy ears where they're kind of floppy like a bat ear. So um, I would do a different ease and ease out for that one. No, but we want to, you know, it's probably in the horror genre, but it's so cartoony that um, it'll probably not feel too horrific, I'm guessing. Plus, we've been noticing when we go to these conferences, a lot more kids are drawn to something yeah, that's so and like we I don't know if it, you know calling it hashtag blood was the smartest idea or but um you know that was just unintended we just wanted to kind of get the 90s cartoon fans almost no but and we're, a lot we're of, happy to have any fan there's a lot of girls that were playing it too yeah we didn't I got a message the other day asking, you know, my daughter keeps talking about it. Yeah. When can we get a release? So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The year will be 2030 when it's out. My kids will just. I'll have uh, my son picking up the rest of the sprites. I'm gonna sail off into the night. I think at least my daughter's getting real close. She, yeah, hey, bring her in, please. We got a computer. <laughs> She's been pumping out those. Uh, here's a oh yeah, you want to show her? Here. This is uh, <laughs> I can't tell what this is. This is Bob's daughter, and she just she's six. Oh, not even six, five. Yeah, five. She's, she's five, five now. So she, you see how much we do this? That it's rubbing off on her kids. She also drew some of the dinosaurs. Yeah, she did, and she was. It's all before school in the morning, so she's, yeah. she's just flying through it. So she's I do like how out. kids like how to like to draw, though. You know, both my kids like it. It's like a universal thing. And uh, now my my son likes watching all these uh, all the sprites. Stuff too. Though he, he's sort of a scary cat, so whenever it is a villain on the screen, he tells me to turn it off. <laughs> My other son, well, he, he's sort of the brave one, so. Alright, so I'm going to color this. Um, I always do uh, no gaps when I color, especially with all those corners and now it can become a pain when you when you miss something, but I find with a thicker brush, you it's it's sort of hard to miss a gap when you're working that big. Okay. When he uses eight, I got her in please flip book for fun. I really train her differently. That. I need to I need to train someone in my family in between. No, it's uh, it's a fun profession because I, I do find my my kids are fascinated with what I what I do. And one day I hope to make money in it. You too. Yeah. <laughs> you you do can work sixty hours a week and be poor.
all color. So I'll copy the middle frames here. Control Alt C. Copy them over here. Control Alt B to paste in place. Then I'll uh, right click, reverse frames. And there you go. I made a second of a torso by just using half the, half the amount of drawings you would need if I was doing that secondary thing. So now that that's done, <clears throat> got the eyes here. Now I separated the eyes in this case because I could do a blink if I need to. So this one I'll bring into this symbol. Line it up. So one thing I don't get, it never lines up correctly when I hit control alt v which should paste it in place. But I think it's because it registers the symbol wrong. Line it up. And I'll kind of follow the I same thing. It's from the center point of the, <clears throat> the center point of the symbol or something that has to do with. Okay, guys, gotta wrap up some stuff and let and go get the kids from school looking great and keep on uh, keeping on. I'll see if I can swim back. Right. Yeah, no, stop by tomorrow. We'd love to chat. That'd be that'd be great. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Now, if anyone's in the city tomorrow, uh, you know it's not just our animation either. There's a bunch of really cool films this year. Uh, and man, if the kids aren't getting more talented day by day by a day, a little too good, too quick. It's kind of scary. We get it, kids. You're better than us. <laughs> They have these fancy computers. Yeah, I guess that's an excuse. I'll, I'll, I'll let that excuse dry. Yeah. Um, no, there's a few student films that just graduated. Um, you would be super surprised how, like if you were to see, see this film on its own, that a student just completed that. Uh, I haven't seen all the films either, but I've seen... Uh, two or three of them, and they're fantastic. All SVA grads, too. And it's fun. We all have drinks. We go to, we go drinking afterwards. Uh, we got a hotel, so we could stay late into the night. Cody's gonna be there. Our friend Lou should be there. It'll be a fun time. So this is a pretty extreme sort of pose right now, but you have to keep in mind that at 25%, it won't look as vast. So, and I'll probably ease and ease out that. And I had the eyes kind of squashed together too, so I just had to keep that in mind. I've been having a little trouble with the eyes sometimes when they're this small. I had some trouble last night with the football players actually, because the eyes were wobbling an awful lot, so I had to redo a lot of it late at night. And then when I get super tired too, I like overanalyze things. I think then I'm, I wake up in the morning like, why did I care about that? It's so um, tiny too. Once you find this, yeah, it would just be like the for the football players for me though. It's just like like when you saw like a gap between the eye and then not, and it was doing that, that like every other uh, frame. Mm -hmm. It was like really stuttery, and they're just they're all just eyes. So it uh, was really kind of like sticking out. And I planned on using it a lot because I wanted to repeat the symbol. So I went in there. Why I finished at 12:45, not my usual 11:30. All right, so the volume super important with these things. Not so much the shape of the eyes in this case; it just has to feel like the volume doesn't change. And there is a difference when you kind of analyze it like that. 
and we don't use model sheets. I created all these characters this morning. I took some of the characters from the bus to use them as sort of guides. And I always have um, a sprite of Becky in there too, so I, I, because I tend to make her really small and everyone else big, but I want her, to, I, I mean, she, she's tiny compared to everyone else, but I don't want it to feel like she's from a different cartoon. Frank makes it. Chet, are you working from home or uh, leave your report today? When they get this close, I don't need to really rough it out. Though sometimes that's famous last words. Yeah, I like using kind of like this timing too because you can get a lot of mileage out of it and now I can just change the eyes to do something and we can keep it feeling like it's all one drawing. The double mics creates uh, odd echo sound. Is it so, is it like that now? I thought we fixed it. I thought we fixed it too. I you don't know if it was also my mic was acting. We, I think we changed it from stereo too. Yeah, you're going to have to bear with us until we figure that out. As everything on this Twitch, it's, everything's a learning process. We started doing Twitches without knowing what it was. I still don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's not a... I know it has... Uh, I know a lot of people play those Battle Royale games. And no, it is there still. some reason people get paid to do it. What's that? It is there still. Oh, it is there. Which it wasn't in our... It wasn't in the test report. Uh, we're sorry, guys. We're going to figure it out. And, uh, we're just going to get rid of a microphone is what we're yeah. going to do. <laughs> yeah, the Fortnite. Who, who saw that coming? It's just a funny thing. Uh, what do you think about... Like, it just 10 years ago, there was none of this, and now people make a living doing stuff on YouTube and all that stuff, so it's, it must be tough for kids in high school or 
just getting into the workforce because I feel like the workforce is constantly changing in a way. Like, I was watching this documentary and I completely forgot like it was about social media and the adverse effects of it and all this stuff. And there was this, they had like the world's most famous Vine star. And I was like, I forgot about that. I, I forgot about Vine. Oh, it is gone. So no, it's gone now. Just, and then just like, like the, and you know, it, it went into that. Like, it kind of was the rise and demise of all them. Like, um, not demise, but like, sort of them kind of uh, regretting the fame they had, or uh, you know, there's some success stories too, but the. Oh yeah, Mike Milo. We loved Mike Milo. We would oh, always Mike watch. Milo. We used to always watch it. Yeah. Completely, I love watching him anime. He's our uh, spirit animator. We call him. Yeah, I feel like he's <laughs> sort of looking into uh, future, the, the <laughs> Christmas future, a little bit. Um, well, I just loved watching him animate too. I thought he was a great teacher about it too. And he would just sit there every Saturday, and he, you know. Animation's a, you know, it's a brick by brick kind of thing, and in seven weeks he'd have a full film, and it was while teaching people, and I was like, oh, we can sort of, you know, have a similar kind of thing where we are forcing ourselves to work on something while kind of showing an inside process. I love I, I wish he would do it more. I think he was hired by Adobe to do it. Yeah, I think he was for a little bit to do. Like, I don't even think, I think the Adobe one shut down. Yeah. Um, there you go. Okay, so that was a touch, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to reverse these frames now. I've got color. No, I want Mike to, he, he keeps teasing that he might again. Oh, really? Yeah, Facebook group. No, we're, we're a part of that group, too. I love that group, too. Though I don't know if he would appreciate me always sort of bad, bad mouthing Adobe. <laughs> but I, I've heard him, when, uh, when he was doing his other Twitch, yeah. is that we not sponsored by Adobe. He, he laid into him a little bit. So we got this kind of ease and ease out. So what I'm going to do now? <clears throat> So now we can have a blink here. And then reverse that, and then we'll have a two second cycle with just changing a few elements. That is the half blink blink. Okay. Now, some people do blinks with their eyes where they kind of keep the shape of the eye and do that. And this is where you kind of go flat line in it. So it'll, I'll still follow the contours and everything. My wife's wondering what, what the hell I ordered from Amazon. What did you order? It's the tablecloths for, oh, for, for tomorrow night. Why did I get black tablecloths? We gotta decorate them for the. We gotta set up the game. The game tomorrow night at the, in the lobby, so we need some. So you can kind of see the timing roughing out here. And you can see all of a sudden you'll have two seconds of animation that can loop forever if you need to. Now, because I'm trying to make as much work as we can for everyone, I'm gonna continue so it's not just a two second cycle here. Like he can look to the left and to the right or do something else. I try to do at least two sort of idle things per idle animation, uh, whether it's turning their head, if it's a talk, if like the characters are talking to each other, they'll have one talk while the other one listens and vice versa. Um, it's those little details I find that kind of take it away from the traditional way games are sort of making their sprites. And I want it to always feel alive and sort of pulsating. Now is this the halfway point is the question is that oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Oh. That's what was going on. I had to repeat the last frame there. Okay, so for when these blink, like this is technically the bottom 
of this right here. So I'll keep that in mind as I go forward. And I'll start sort of going like that. So I'll kind of flatten the top, like the, the top of the lid. And if the eyes are like the opposite way, it would be the bottoms that are going up, depending on the mood. You're, I'm trying to set here. I'll I'll switch the direction of the eyelid, and it's all just sort of that design stuff. All right. I'm gonna make that red just so I can see. forget because it's so cold in the winter here. And we do have summers? <laughs> well, just in this building, I always forget how hot it gets. You get the air going too. Yeah. Chet knows what, uh, the, when we were working at Augen Blitz together, we, Chet and I picked the, um, the desks closest to where the sun was at its hottest, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we were just drenched at all times. It'll be a, we do. We just show up with like we, right we, we we there is we always have kind of dumb contests. It's like let's just not wear sleeves all production, so we don't have these cut off sleeves <laughs> and stuff and do stuff like that. Or it's like let let's uh, like no shaving. You can't shave during this production and all that stuff. But when it was hot, we always do the no sleeve thing. I think it was just me and Chet that person. <laughs> 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 I think that. It's always like that guy that's like, I'm going to grow a beard this whole thing and nobody else is no, doing it. Yeah, you do. You say, yeah, cool sounds stuff. good. Cool story, bro. We're going to be doing work over here, but uh, you guys uh, have fun. No, we'd, have, we'd always make those little things. It's stuff like that, what? You really sort of miss those big studios. And I also like when uh, we were also sharing the workload a little bit. Yeah, was <laughs> that was nice. And two guys didn't have to do the whole thing. Those were nice days. Always make sure to save, too. Right? You won't see the save bar come up. MX doesn't have that, but I. I try to save every couple minutes. Oh, someone's posting us? Do you know, does uh, so, can someone let it, is that, that's a good thing, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> For, as far well, as we can tell. Yeah. Uh, clumsy Martian. I feel like I've seen Clumsy Martian oh, well, on... Uh, uh, the, well, thank you, Clumsy Martian. Thanks for uh, helping us out. The more eyes on it... Uh, you know, the more inspired we get to draw it and to continue this journey we're going on. Oh, we're also in a tweet today about Edge Magazine, right? Yeah. We, we could show that tweet where uh, it showed our... We did a two-page spread in that the magazine Edge. It's pretty cool. We could even show um, the alternate oh, one that thanks. we never finished. Yeah, yeah. we could show that. Uh, Clumsy Martian, thanks. Uh, thanks for hosting us. What's going on? We're working on a game called Hashtag Blood, and it's a traditionally animated video game, and we're working on some sprite animation now. Or the animation that will eventually be turned into sprites. Uh, thanks for joining us, Chaos Tunes. Yeah, I gotta go. Alright, well, thanks for joining us. I know it's in the middle of a work day for a lot of you. And or the middle of the morning. Or, yeah, <laughs> depending where you are. Uh, posting here, I posted the Twitter that has our ed, the Edge magazine uh, piece that we did kind of made like a Where's Waldo of yeah that was fun thank you it was pretty cool because we didn't have to worry about sprites it was just a design kind of thing all right let's get the rest of the eyes closed so now we're gonna sort of circle down like that. People's still gonna rise. Is his head rising? Three 
know. That's another part about like kind of animating small is you, you have to do less roughs, I find, which is always sort of a time saver. Kind of frowned upon in the animation community, <laughs> but I. Uh, Cleaning up seems to be kind of frowned upon. In yeah, the now I try to. I want to make every drawing count towards something. It's, you know, there's beauty in the roughs for sure, but this. We're trying to get a game finished here. So I'll take some liberties in that regard. I love the art of Oh, you like that one? Yeah, those ones were fun, the shadow vampires. Oh, no, or no, the probably the hatchling ones he's probably talking oh, about. Like oh, the from the, ones. yes, yeah. yes, those are the hatchlings. That's sort of a vampire in its uh, youngest form. And, uh, you know, the, we were kind of talking about Ninja Turtles earlier with our buddy Frank, but I was thinking about, like, those mousers, if anyone remembers yes. the... Uh, especially during the arcade game, uh, Turtles in Time, there was these little kind of such annoying little things. They were so they were harder than the real thing. The those things, the one, ones, remember the ones with the lasers that spin? Yeah, that oh, oh, oh yeah, I those ones are the worst. That was one of my probably my favorite games on Super Nintendo. I didn't even have that. Andrew likes the vampire butts. Then I got a surprise for you later. <laughs> uh, but uh, Bob and I got. When was it when we first got that game? We beat it in 27 minutes or something when we were drinking. Oh, the turtle game. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, we, the yeah well, I didn't we had like an that. emulator. So. Oh, no, I think I had it on Super Nintendo. I we just had it in from, your house. We yeah. just, we just, it was such a fun game, though. It's so funny what, like, because I beat that game so many times as a kid. But it was and so it just, it. your image of time is so askew as a kid or something, like, I felt like I went on this journey with the turtles. I felt like I went on this, everything was like, I did it in under a half hour. <laughs> I get this now, too, because games are like, it's not a good game unless it's over 15 hours of game. And we, I mean, you, we beat it buzzed after uh, probably 17 years of not playing it in one try. <laughs> No, it was also, I don't know if that constitutes a good game, it, but it was a memorable game. But it was funny because me and you beat it that easily, and then I tried to play it later that weekend, I think, because I, I just bought like the old Super Nintendo, and I tried to play with my brother-in-law, and he sucked at it, and we oh. uh, couldn't get anywhere because he had never played it before. So you're saying drinking helped in this <laughs> context. Uh, the Super Nintendo was sort of my... It's the basis of a lot of joy, I feel like. I just loved everything about it. So now I'm going to reverse these frames. We'll have a blink. Control V, reverse frames. Then I kind of just move them over here. Let's see what we got here. Alright, so we got this cycle here. We're going to keep the same chart. Uh, now, not all the characters follow this exact chart, but anytime something moves inside this symbol, we're going to have to at least trace back or make sure the arms move outside of it. Uh, it's a sort of a pet peeve of mine when animation moves at a different rate uh, with the same character. So what do we got here? I got the head, we got the pen. What is that? Oh, that's the eyes. We can lose those. Okay. So, he's on this desk. We can always move the paper around and stuff, but I'm going to make sure... Okay. So what I'm going to do, I made the pen a symbol, or I'm going to at least... Nope, Mr. Blue. So I'm going to pop the pen around so it moves a little bit. Uh, okay, 2D brand Oh, yeah, we're, we're doing well. The master thing. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to make that a symbol. I'll call it classroom. Character. Mr. 
Mr. Owens. Okay. Now I remember I copied this chart. So what I do here, and this is what I call the trace back, is when I just I've got to draw it over twice, and then just make sure it follows this same chart. So I'm gonna kind of copy and paste the frames there. So just something quick. It's called a shimmer for some people. Sometimes it's called a line boil, but it's all the same principle. Where it's just you're taking the original image, sort of tracing back, sort of like how Windsor McKay had to do with backgrounds back in the early 1900s. And it just makes sure to keep it on the same chart. Somehow it will still look better than what people are doing today. That was great. <laughs> well, he started a genre. He had an assistant trace, I forget how many, it was something. No, well, it was like they would just trace that, then he would have to draw on top of it. But like every, you know, yeah. he kind of reused sheets, so he had to retrace it constantly. <laughs> Lots. Uh, Red Bull does stuff like that, it, I feel like now, like in those commercials. So I'm just copying the frames, making sure they all hit the same spot. sort of trace back here and 100% you can see it sort of moving. Uh, I'm going to keep the anchor point down here and for this one how the other chart was up and down by 13 frames then a second I'm going to do this twice as fast so at we'll start here frame 7 over here and then 13 and then we could just copy and paste that so this is going to be an ease out ease ease in two but uh, vice it's going to be in between those two things so I'll go negative 100 100 negative 100 so you see we got this pen sort of drawing back and forth. And I'll erase the frames that don't coordinate with it. So we got this for now, right? And we can keep that like that. Now I'll probably separate the hand if I'm going to be honest too. So we can kind of time that out right. And then I'll just copy and paste these frames too. Well, let me separate the hand from this one. 2 Brando, 2D Brando just saw Flex Caliber. Oh, did you? That's airing tomorrow too at our film festival. Yeah. If you want to see it live with the crew. Yeah. That was oh, I'm glad you liked it. It's uh, that's not for everyone. <laughs> Definitely not. Not for a lot of people. We found. My wife. Just wanted <laughs> it's a little <laughs> scandalous. But no, we had fun. We wanted to do sort of like a, just a completely adult version of just a rock and roll. And we like the concept of like the death of rock and roll and stuff with all the kind of modern music. So it was fun kind of commentary. So I'm going to grab this or just trace over it. Turn that off. Now I'm going to just sort of move it like that. And then I'll put this in a symbol and we can move this around as much as we want. So. Yeah, Flex was a, was a fun one. We worked with um, yeah, Gary we Doodles and Tommy Sika from uh, Breadwinners. I, I went to school with Gary, so I always thought he was one of the funniest people I've ever, I ever knew at school. And it's funny because Gary created a show for Nickelodeon and he's not like a public figure at all. Like he's just a super approachable, yeah. really friendly, nice guy. And uh, 
we got we actually I got to know him through the these festivals that we sponsor. And uh you know, we showed him a pencil test of something we did for Flex Caliber. <laughs> and I was like, Would you be interested in helping us write this? And he said, Absolutely. And that's when we got to meet our friend uh, Tommy too. And right now we're in the middle of writing a script for it to try to pitch it to maybe a Netflix or whoever will have it, maybe an Adult Swim. Um, it's a 22 minute script. So. <laughs> it's not, it, I don't show my wife too much that I work on. She doesn't really even want to know what I work on, so that's a good good point, Dan. <laughs> my, what, don't show, what is it? Don't, you don't show her everything you work on. Oh, no. I, well, yeah, <laughs> like Bob said, no, there's not a lot of interest in. I think it's. Only when, like, if you didn't, like, if you, something happened big and it's like, well, you didn't tell me about that, that's when it's. That's when they care all of a sudden. Uh, my wife always asks me how was work and stuff, yeah, and I, I'll tell her, like, about clients and stuff, but the, like, the minutia of animation, she's not too interested in. I don't know a lot of people who are, though. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Bre yeah, Breadwinners, it was, I very I underrated, Dan was saying. I think I it, love um, bread, Breadwinners. I, I think it was very interesting. He made the, he made the short on his own. Yep. Because they didn't, they didn't want it, Nickelodeon, or they wouldn't take, they didn't take his pitch, and so he made it on his own, and uh, he played it at this festival at that we're going festival. to tomorrow. Uh, somebody from Nickelodeon finally ended up seeing it because it did pretty well on YouTube. Then they picked it up. Yeah. Then they pretended that they, they had to make him pretend that it was, uh, you know, that they they paid to get you know make this short, and oh, that was the go. end of that. That's that. That simple. And that's how you gotta show me. <laughs> Lessons just make your own thing. It's really, no, really it's just the story. make your own thing. And then... oh. No, that that is true. I encourage everyone just to make their own film. And even if it goes nowhere, at least you learn something about the process and you learn something about yourself, I think too. Alright, so I got this pen separated. So now I got this separated, I can erase these two things and I can kind of move this around the paper where I see fit and kind of match cut, cut it where it is. And what I did, why it's not looping right, is because I just have to erase that. That should follow the same exact chart. And now we can move this around the paper, so I'm going to double click, not edit. This and we'll make sure it always kind of hits back at 25, but it can. 13, it gets over. And we can make the paper bigger. I think I want. Actually, I'll start over here. We're gonna do it, let's do it right. We'll draw to 13, then we'll have a lift up and put it over here again. So okay, so that's what I'll do. So frame 19 we'll have a go back in. Well let's see what that does first. I'm gonna put it on a guide layer so it kind of lifts up. Sure, these are arc. Oh, Lauren's here. Oh, Lauren, good, uh, thanks for joining us. I, I know uh, Friday's usually our day, but we'll be out of uh, town tomorrow. Okay, that could really get time back if we need to. Going to the big city. I feel like the city is not the same place I remember at all anymore. Well, we don't know anyone stay. there either. It's like this... Oh, gosh. Nothing's the same anymore. Follow the same guy, so he's going to go over there. That's a negative 100. Uh, do we have any plans with Brutus the Bound? 
No, we pitched. Uh, did we pitch? That? We pitched. Yeah, it, they did get pitched around with. With Joe. Well, and some other. Uh, I think it was the Soup to Nuts guys. Yes. Before they went out of business. But it didn't pick up much traction. Maybe, no, so. I think it was a little too on the nose too. Like yeah. we sort of we wanted to pay. Uh, you know, Samurai Jack and homage, and I think the fact that it looked like that and it was about a time traveling warrior <laughs> probably was a little too much. Okay, so we got that drawn. Okay. So now I'm going to coordinate the hand with that. So that hand is. Let's see, we could just repeat that. I don't need the guide layer because I keep printing it all out. All right, then we can double the paper. Cool. And a lot of my stuff, you'll notice, I kind of just wing it like that. So there's a lot of second guessing. There's a lot of these twitches where I, I look back at what I did and it's like, I could really tighten that up and stuff. Um, so I don't want you to think this is how everything is sort of done, but we do wing it a lot here. Um, So I'll go, this will be behind it eventually, but I'm going to keep this in mind. And that's why I had to do the torso first, so I could always kind of match the shoulder to where it has to be. Now, so uh, Brutus the Bound was fun. It was sort of like, we were doing a lot of traditional stuff at the time, and then we really pushed our flash sort of kind of tricks to the edge with that one and then even more so I think the effects are the thing that sells Brutus the Bound because if you see the original files a lot of shape tweens a lot of that kind of stuff yeah it wasn't too much it, but it wasn't you know it wasn't it didn't look great to be honest <laughs> when, you, when I look back and see what the flash files were uh, but I could still go back and look at the film and be really happy with it. And uh, now our friend uh, Joe Carlson, who's also at Netflix now, he uh, wrote that and uh, co-created it with us. And uh, Joe was a it was a, he still is a big uh, friend to the studio. We sort of owe a lot to Joe. He took a chance on us when we were first starting out as a studio with our first real gig was working with him. Alright, so you see the shoulder dips down here, or starts going up, so we're going to follow that. And, but everyone's moving to Netflix now. We All our Nickelodeon contacts went over to Netflix. Uh, a lot of Cartoon oh, Network people. Something. What was Nickelodeon doing again today? They were doing another YouTube star or something, I thought, uh, they were trying yeah. to do. Well, God, what did I see that commercial for today? It was just one of those things where it was just like, man, these are last, last ditch grabs at trying to get kids to watch. Uh, it's something about trying to get a YouTube star to do something outside of YouTube. I don't know if you're going to have a lot of success success doing that. They sort of found, they their audience found them, or they have their audience, and that's sort of their perf, it's like, that they belong on YouTube, that's where they're thriving, and then the beauty of YouTube is you can watch it at any time. Oh, so. that's what I was the news, they're doing Daddy Shark, they're doing Baby Shark, that's what oh, it is, well, Baby Shark, they're doing Baby Shark. I hear shark enough of that at my house, I won't be tuning <laughs> into that. The Baby Shark cartoon. That'll be something. Like they're making it a series? Like a series on Nickelodeon, that's what uh, on. Well, they can't all be good ideas, folks. But I never thought they could all be bad ideas. <laughs> all bad. <laughs> it's just such a... What do like... I don't know. Where do you go from the song? You definitely <laughs> not seem to be doing very well right now. <laughs> no. It's... 
it's sort of sad. I feel like Network is almost kind of a graveyard now, though. Um, we just live in an instant gratification age, too, so... Plus, when you get too big or something, you kind of lose your edge, I feel like. So, yeah, but the baby shark. Oh, man. My son will be happy. I guess that's who they're going for, though. Yeah, I mean, they're not going for the the thirty-nine year old uh, male demographic. I don't think. So. All right. So I'm gonna put that under. I'm gonna see if the collar or whatever the sleeve part lines up right. Sometimes I get well, decent enough. Yep. We're going to keep it. All right. So then it goes up and over to 25. Repeat. Okay. So now we're going to keep the shoulder in the same spot, but the elbow sort of moves up. and he's out too. So that chart I established in the very beginning of the twitch is going to just stay throughout until we kind of change the next pose. And then we can have some fun with it where it's not so sort of not robotic, but not so predictable. Also, if we decide to have Becky talk to this character, we'll need to sort of have a part of him sort of listening or talking and all that stuff. And that's sort of the part of the process we're in now where we're looking at the demo and we're seeing all the sort of holes in the animation that we sort of need to fill out. We got all of Becky kind of figured out. She's animated. We have cutaway scenes that are finished. We have all the characters that are principal players finished. But now there's those areas where it's like, oh, what if you did want to talk to this character? What if you did want to go into the treehouse? All those kind of things that we're kind of tightening up to make sure we have everything we can for the next big showing. And hopefully by December, when we go back to MAGFest, and I don't see why we can't, but we're going to have all, like a whole new level is what we hope to have. Um, with the winter backgrounds, with uh, the catacombs, it'll be more outside kind of area rather than the school. Um, but, you know, we're filling this out to feel as much of a cartoon as we can. So whenever there's character animation that's missing, we're kind of documenting that now and making sure we can fill it in. It's funny, I, I, you know, when we first started this, I was like, oh, we're going to make a lot more villains and all this stuff. And it's like, I haven't touched a villain in so long because we're just trying to set up the intro sort of to feel like there's not any danger really yet. The it's important, coming. it's coming. No, but the important part is, I think, right now, is that it feels like a regular day at a cartoon school, and I, I think we're accomplishing that. That's why we have like the athletes and the nerds, and we have a goth girl. We have some punk kids. We have a bunch of different teachers. And, uh, all of which helps tell the story in the way we kind of hope to craft it. Alright, so let's go up here. Okay, close to this one. I'll just fix that edge a little bit. And we're just about... Oops. Just about finished here with this guy. Okay. Color that, put it behind, and then I can make that whole arm a symbol if I need to.
by bringing all the frames into one symbol. this for a few seconds and you can see it doesn't feel too repetitive. I mean it, it does and it doesn't. But when in the context of the whole thing at 25%, you know, we've got one there. So what I'll do here. I'll make this a little bigger. Now, if I look at the original background, see, I just took elements from this and try to place the kids on that. So we have the girl kind of drawing on the chalkboard here. So I can have him kind of uh, go and take a look at what she's doing now. So we'll maybe do, let's say, another frame like this. So we'll make this three seconds of just this part. So let's say it gets to that, that's the extreme right here. I'll single frame this so it stops. And now I can kind of play with the animation knowing that he's going to be looking over his, his left shoulder. And that's when you get to play with the, f like, uh, what's nice about these cartoony characters is you could really, like, stretch them and he could go off model a lot. So we can... You know, look over there, make a funny face. I think he's kind of checking up on her. do another ease and ease out to that or we can have him shoot over there you know it's all about what the character like what the character wants to do and uh like he seems like sort of a measured guy he's a math teacher so he probably wouldn't just like do a quick turn unless something scared him or even better yet if uh becky came over to talk to him you know i could use some of that and like she could be over here like we'll have the talk button here so we can look over there and start talking to her but right now we're going to have him sort of check in on the girl writing something on the chalkboard. Awesome. Coffee drinking teachers too. Actually we did dad we, drinking a coffee, right? We did do a, a we have a character drinking coffee. I appreciate your no, just Oh, did you? Oh, did someone answer? No. I I oh, hold on. I missed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, he did go. Yeah, Nickelodeon. I completely agree. Uh, everybody is moving to digital shows now. TV is slowly being. Yeah, no, it is. And you know, I think it benefits the smaller studios like ours, where all of a sudden we're not contenders to say someone like a Ted Mouse who could crank out a series. I mean, that, they seem to. They have read a butter series. Read an interview. He's working on 17 series now. That's a lot of you know, we were, we were approached to do a series once, and it, I, I got scared. And so <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he seems to throw up that. Biker man. Okay, so we're all caught up. No, but we do have that, uh, the dad drinking coffee. We could do it. Oh, you know what a fun 
side quest could be is get into the teacher's lounge and get something. Yes. That's and then you can see like all the teachers smoking cigarettes so like or something. That's like a faculty in the movie yeah. um, kind of thing too. So let's see. Let's make sure he lines up correctly. Change the eye line slightly, I think. Yeah, that's something we're going to try to do a lot of is use reference from mm -hmm. from that. I guess faculty was in the 80s, but kind of that time genre of that kind of horror. Yeah, we're kind of reluctant to turn, like, it's sort of like the adults are the ones get affected by all the vampires and stuff, so we didn't want to, you know, putting a kid in danger or turning into a vampire just seemed a little, it didn't leave a great taste in our mouth, to be honest. But, like, when a teacher, <laughs> for some reason, when an adult does, does it, it seems a little more appropriate. up a little bit. I'll separate the eyes and make it do a blink here. And I won't redraw the pen until I'll, I'll pop it back. So I'll separate all those things. When I in-between, though, I'll do all the in-betweens on one layer, just because it, I, I used to be really big into separating everything, you know, doing a separate eye, uh, separate pupil. It was when I was first learning Flash. I loved, I loved it so much, I was like, oh, this is so cool, you could just keep reusing stuff. But it got to a point where I was taking longer than traditionally animating it. So I'll separate this. The head right here. Let's do a match cut a little bit. Just grew up it so I have it separated. I'll just do the rest behind it. Probably separate the arm too, I'm thinking. Back's going to change a little bit. Leaning in. Here. Are you? Uh, I have a few keyboard shor shortcuts, but none more really than what Flash provided me. Uh, when we work in Animate, though, we do have one separated for motion tweens and all that kind of stuff. No, but you're filming. I think you just can't see the... Oh! You probably can't see. We don't have the thing on where you see the mouse, so you're probably just clicking. And oh, no, I click on the, um, the tool, the toolbar a lot. I, like, I, I think B is for brush and stuff. I never really use that. this. Make sure it's all separated. Shift D separates them. So that 
with the arm, that's the arm, and not the face. So this face could be somewhere right here. All right, so these are. And remember, the pen's going to be separated, so I'll have that uh, on the bottom layer. Not to worry about that now. Uh, when I do these moves, I usually do a settle, even if it is an ease and ease out. I just find it close a little bit nicer. So I'll keep in mind what the motion is. He's going to be kind of going down and up, so we're going to overshoot, keep overshooting that way. The eyes a little bigger. Again, the volume changes, not the not so much the shape, but the volume. It's sounding like a Friday outside. People are celebrating early yeah, around these parts. <laughs> but tomorrow at this time I'll be celebrating too. So I can't I can't be mad at him today. Yeah, I got I got pretty fast at just do clicking on the uh, toolbar. And uh, I kind of when I type too, I'm constantly looking at the keyboard, so I find I didn't really have to do that when I I was going into the toolbar. bustling outside. So we have the sort of so I didn't yeah. know that was still a cool thing, I guess. To <laughs> it, it never was. Uh, I don't know. Alright. Alright. Do people still waste all their money on subwoofers? That's a yeah, why not? <laughs> I also invite you guys, if you ever have a question about just animation in general that you think we could help you with, um, does not to be necessarily in the style or this technique, but you know, we have accrued a bit of information in our journey, this 20 year journey we've been on. So if we can offer any help when you guys are struggling with something or need advice on a, something how Exit 73 would approach it. You can always leave a question in this chat or on YouTube, any of that stuff. We try to answer all of them. Biker man can't draw, so that, I guess that's a... That is just practice, though. That's, really is. That is really just the thing where if you sat down and drew a picture every day for a year, you would look back at the first drawing and the 365th drawing and notice incremental changes for sure. Um, and there's people with natural talent, obviously, but it's the, in this industry, it's all just perseverance and practice and the willingness to work extra hours and all that stuff. You know, and with, aside from the prodigies out there, that's the whole industry is just people who at one time couldn't draw and now can draw. If it's something that interests you. You have to have a passion for it, else there's a million other things you could do. All right. So that'll just be um, a settle, which I'll try to settle on twos. With the first one kind of shooting up ones. Do one in between for the settle. You don't. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you guys understand the settle part. So I'll just do one settle, one drum for the settle. Hit it up later this afternoon. I'm always struggling. That's why it's that interesting. No, it's it's tough. I think any field though, it's just a matter of practice and perseverance. Especially anything in computers. Well, not for you. I don't know if you could. I you could don't think practice would help? Practice would help. I would need a lot of practice. <laughs> All right. 
So let's see what this looks like. All right, cool. No, this guy kind of reminds me of remember in all the movies, their teacher. Not Mr. McGurk or Coach McGurk, but the no, other guy. I'm vaguely remembering. I can't. He had a mustache. I'm thinking though, of the right? dad, yeah. I'm thinking more, or Melissa's well, dad, I'm thinking of. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> that was a great show. That was a show that changed styles, like. Remember it just used to, it, they did like the Dr. Cat squiggle and then they stopped? Yeah, did they, like the first season, right? And then they I don't know, it might have been two seasons where they did the uh, squiggle, I'm not exactly sure. I always wondered how they did that. I think that was just a, like, noise thing and effort effects? No, no, I think that was a program they were using. It was like, I think, because that's what Dr. Cats was done in. And I think they oh, they, that wasn't done in, that was, oh, they moved to Flash. I think they moved to Flash from whatever they were using. Uh, but the first program, the first time it wasn't, you think the Dr. Katz thing was just a program? You yeah, know, I think it was an older program, it's just, that's just how it drew. <laughs> I remember having, like, a real old one in high school that kind of had that, like, it was pixel, almost, you know? Really? Uh, I had a phone call with a friend of the small a while ago That's when I was still at Augen Blitz and I was doing freelance or soup to nuts and got on the phone once and it was just it was his like he doesn't do a voice and it was, it was so like disarming like I didn't know how to like I just like I'm just talking to this I, I don't know what I don't know what the guy looks like to this day. I just pictured him that orange haired kid with the pointy nose. <laughs> and it was like that person was talking back to me on the phone. Isn't he heavy into like metal too? I think he's like really into like music and stuff. Uh, Dan was asking, how do you guys decide where to cut scenes in your flash files? Do you guys go scene mm -hmm. by scene or shot by shot? Uh, I guess it depends. are you using Adobe Animate? Because I then we have to when we're using Animate we have to go scene by scene pretty yes. much. It, they just the files can't go too long at all. Yeah, um, CS3 and lower. I feel like we, you, we do do like up to a minute, right? Two minutes. I like usually do around, around 40, 40 seconds, seconds to a minute when it's um, MX. Uh, anything more than that, it's going to be cumbersome. And then I would separate it in like scene one, scene two, scene three. There. Um, it depends also how we're going to plan on exporting it now. We're doing some stuff with live action now for a certain client where it's going to be transitioning over something, but Bob has to do so many effects to it that we're going to take each shot and do the effects to it and then kind of overlay over the But, te I mean, technically we do have, it's a two-minute thing, and we have the two minutes of yes. stuff in and that's in files. Animate, too, so... Um, no, it's sort of illustration, so it's not very hev heavy, like it's not a giant burden drawing-wise. But, um, yeah, uh, but I'll, uh, you yeah, know, we try to found it. the files just start getting so, they get giant. so big so quick if you start going over a certain time. Oh, they get, they get really big. You can open up an MX file. Do this if you guys have a mix of the only... Idiot, well done. But, um, <laughs> do do yourself a favor if you ever get it, get a hand on it, draw something in MX, save it, do something, open it up and animate, draw something, save it, and watch the file size just blossom into something that you would never, you could never get away with. There's like, there's some that were 400 megs we're working on when yeah. we're working on this project for a client. Now, you couldn't, like MX, you couldn't do that. Like, you just couldn't get it up to 400 megs unless you brought in a high res movie, maybe. And it would crash because naturally it doesn't, you know, it's not meant to take that burden. So I don't, I don't have an answer for why they, why they did that. But it, it, it really depends on the project. Well, I guess, I don't know question. what the scene function is in anime that, that's a new thing. There you go. Because they're like, we don't ever mess with the cameras. We don't, yeah. everything we, we're just so used to the way we did it. So even in Animate, we'll put mm -hmm. everything inside of one giant symbol if we need to do a camera move. 
like we don't ever mess with the cameras or any of that stuff. No. I, there was also never a project I found that e even a style that we agreed to do that we couldn't really, like that animate was going to be beneficial to us to use that program. You know, the, the styles usually comes down to draftsmanship and there's certain jobs we just can't do. Like if someone asks us to do like, hey, can you do a punch man animation? We're like, no, we're just not that good. But if someone says, could you do a UPA style, or can you do, um, you know, a Looney Tunes one or something, it, you know, we found that MX, since it was just about drawing, we could do everything at MX, so we sort of just gravitated towards that. There's the same thing in MX, too. You can make scenes within one file. Uh, oh, you can, oh. Yeah, we, I, we've never messed I know what you're talking about. We're always in scene one. That's what we never Oh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. just in scene one. And then we'll make a giant, like, we'll call something scene one and move it into, um, like, a symbol and call it that. So, like Ray was that. asking about E3. We're definitely not, not doing E3 this year. I don't think we'll. I uh, One, I don't even know if we submitted it, if we would make it. And I hear it just so expensive to get something in there. We know uh, people who got into packs and how much that cost them. I think it would have to be when we're closer to release. Yeah. To really oh yeah, I you know, I did, also it's we're such a niche game. I feel like I we can dream, I guess, of one day getting there. But um, no, yeah, we have. What a thirty-minute demo! I don't think it warrants E3 yet. And I, I personally, yeah, I never been to E3. So we're I going. Can't really we're speak, so. uh, Case Snipes. Casey Snipes. Uh, we're going to be at the Too Many Games convention in Pennsylvania. That one we're doing. Yeah, we're doing we're that. that. We're what? Actually. What booth are we at? We just got it. We did get it. We're up along the corner, or like along the edge. I forget what it was. We'll, we'll announce it next week too when we have that. Yeah, we're gonna be there. That's what we're trying to get weekend. this demo. Really, um, I guess all the stuff animated for that that showing. Can I show them? Bob, can I show them the treehouse? Yeah. Oh, tree house. Here's. All right, we'll see. Casey Snipes there. Oh. We've, this is our first time going. We only went to Mac. Stop so. by and say uh, the, you saw us on Twitch and all that stuff. But we we love talking to people that in, in real life. Uh, He's been saving. <laughs> you just don't know. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, don't don't worry. I got the saves down. And by the, this is episode twenty-two. We Bob's the crashed once with his. Twitch oh, I did crash once on. Yeah, that, I don't know. But that, the background when you start messing with the background, when I was like erasing mm -hmm. pieces, it gets tough. Is it n in neighborhood, Bob? Uh, no. Well, the, the animation should be. In this is BG Dark. It's well, the animation you're talking about. Oh, didn't you do with the treehouse? Oh, her animated? It's in animation. Oh! Perspective, I think. Oh, but the inside the treehouse. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go to. It's in neighborhood. I forgot I even did that. Tree Fort Elements? Yeah. Alright. I love this background. I'll be the guy excited to ask me all the questions. We're, we're hoping to see, uh, maybe meet the James from ABG, and I know he does a lot of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Too we, I've talked to. Uh, James, uh, we we've done some stuff for him, and him and Mike, we've done a lot of stuff for. So, uh, um, I hope I hope to meet him there. So you see, it, I I love this. This is this gorgeous stuff. So there's a neighborhood. You you go. You can go into the treehouse now. In other words, and Bob does all this really cool stuff. Mike, you'll and all these. Thing. So if you could run over to the jukebox or the boombox and hit it, uh, got it. I don't know if that has the the version that doesn't have it. in there, but uh, we got the. I think these boxes we've seen before. But you can break them. Um, so yeah, we're trying to make everything as interactive as we can right now. Um, and this is. And I can show you did the animation. I think that's in the Becky's folder. 
in an animation. Okay, oh, we're gonna animation and character packing. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, like certain areas, like we, we do have to still do a climbing animation where if you just go off a regular ladder, which we, we don't have it yet, we don't have any call for it yet, but we have a lot of call to animations. There's a part we had to pick up a piece of paper where it just sort of goes into, not a quick time, but a, a sprite of just a very specific part. This one, we found a lot of people wanting to go into the tree fort in the game because it's there and it's, you know, it looks inviting, I guess, so Bob. So that, you know, that's a sprite we'll only use in this context. But you'll walk over to this area here, like that. You'll hit, see a pot that's just climb or go in, and then she kind of does this ninja move in. And you can see Bob started the other climb right there, too. So we have a lot of those sort of, like, that's what I was talking about earlier, how we're trying to, um, um, <laughs> where we're trying to uh, get, like, just fill this out as much as we can. You learn a lot at these conventions, too. Like, yeah. we know what happens in the game, so we're not pressing everything that we sh probably should be. But watching people wanting to go in the treehouse was like, well, that's something we had to add now. Yeah, there was a lot of that. I mean, we added Almost words. every person we know. We actually, it was the first day everybody was trying to, so they actually just added a bubble, like a talk bubble with a little joke about not being able to get into the tree fort. That was the cool part right. about like watching Andrew and Cody work. Yeah, they could fix that Like they would go into their room and come back and be, like Bob and I were helpless at the convention. Yeah. We couldn't draw anything. We don't have our Cintiqs. And even if we did, that would take ages. But they would go up into their room every night or sometimes in the middle of the day, fix something come back out and have a new build and then we just replace it and it'd be fixed. <laughs> it's almost like instant gratification in that regard. That regard. And I'm sure we're going to be doing the same thing at too many games when we see bugs there. Kind of got that. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be streaming our stuff. I don't even know how we would do it. We're going to do it on our phone or not. I guess Can you stream on your phone? I guess we could do a Facebook Live. We have a pretty big Facebook audience, though. No one, no one seems to care. No one seems to <laughs> notice. Okay, so. So we got all that. It's choppy now, but once we can start in between it. So I have this sort of swoop down and over. I don't think it needs any amount. I don't have to follow that chart anymore either since there's no, nothing to really chart. Let's get a few more of these drawings in before we cap off the day. Yeah, I try to, to, when you're animating too, always kind of be mindful of the arcs and stuff. Uh, from that to that, I could have I could have arced this way too, like going up and over. But what I try to avoid at all costs is just going straight because um, nothing really moves naturally in that way. I know you're not, but I'll drop off my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> drop it off. Well, we love seeing everyone's um, real and all that stuff, uh, even if we're not hiring. Um, you know, one day, who knows, we might have to expand um, when things get a little too busy and stuff. That's a, that's a pipe dream, hopefully. No, it is. I always wanted just like a six-person group. I feel like that's a sweet number to have. I'm basing this all, all off of uh, what I came into the industry. Now, like when I, I model a lot of uh, how I approach animation from what I learned at Algon Book Studios. And if you guys haven't, don't know of Algon, you should totally check out Algon Book Studios. They're 
Brooklyn's, New York's, you know, top animation houses and stuff. And I was, I used to work there. So oh, we out. love thoughts on pixel animation. We, I love pixel art. We've done a lot of pixel I've done art, pixel art. Uh, animations. I got a, I got a whole lot of pixel art. We actually did one for blood just for fun the other day. Um, let's see, what can I open that as pixel art other than Voltron? Let's see. I'll show you Voltron, why not? Yeah. Which we did all in Flash. All in Flash. The coin coin actually was not pixel. Everybody thinks it's pixel because no, it's I so think it just feels game like based. It's the one thing that's not pixel. Sure. It gets, uh, I think, because it, it, it's just kind of, it looks like a Super Nintendo side scroller. Okay, part one. See, this is all, all done in pixel. We, one of our big things that we moved from pixel from on this game was I just, I don't know how you stand out as a video game anymore in pixel. Yeah. You see so many great pixel things. And There's so many great pixel it artists. It's so there. hard to stand out. And we wanted to make it feel like you were playing a cartoon, too. So, um, And we're way faster at animating this. So there's way more liberty with just animating, too. At, at least the way we do pixel art. Yeah, pixel art. Pixel the way we were pixel doing art and flash takes a really long time. But you can see all these are, you know... It's all vector pixels, too. So you can zoom in as much as you want. But now all these backgrounds. We did this episode. Uh, we did an AVGN in pixel. The, we did... Yeah, did all we the AVGN the, intro. The opening, yeah, the Where's intro. That? That's probably a But then the other, we did some animated stuff for him that was just regular 2D. Mm -hmm. So when you zoom in, this is at 100% if you can see this grid right here. Then you go to view, take off snapped objects, and go snap to grid right here. Now what you do is take, take the square tool, fill in whatever color you want. Now what you can do is you can see that it's just snapping like as far as I drag it. It just snaps to the next pixel here. So you can do straight lines like that. You can do pixels like that. So it's really literally at points where just one square at a time. You know, so it, it does take a long time to do stuff. But, you know, we found, you know, you could, you could get pretty quick at it. Yeah, it takes a long time. Oh, it, it takes a real long time. But you could double up and then you can make symbols and then... <laughs> Chet. What is, what is Chet, right? Chet just summed up my life, basically. Jesus Christ. It's not easy. 
It's not easy being Chris. <laughs> it's even harder being Bob around Chris. You know. Keep drinking. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm drink. I'm saving all my drinking. There tomorrow. is a tool in. Um, there was a tool in, in the CS. The CS ones, but it wasn't. It wasn't keeping. Like we were trying to keep it really. It was tough because you to didn't pixel. have like. It never kept the pixel ratio the same. No, it, like it had like interesting tools where you could do the circle and stuff. No, those can't be ro like. That's why we would never rotate anything was a big thing of ours. So no, if, if you rotated this, it would just be, you know, it would, it would just look like a rotated pixel, not like it, like, it wouldn't extrapolate it that way. You know, and all of a sudden you can sort of get, get some stuff here, but, no, it was never... But you could pop it. You could pop it. And you you could just pop could it never stuff as long as you never it rotated the, it. One you know. problem we had. You know, and, and then when you do, when you're done with it, you go to erase lines, and erase lines, and then you can color it the way you see fit. But it, you know, it took the next a little off. But it took a while. But you get fast at it, and all of a sudden, you'd end up with a library. I mean, once we, for Voltron, we made so much of Oh, there's the ABGN guy. Oh, there's one ABGN guy. Have to do it. But then all of a sudden we'd have a library, each character. Now all that blood is reused. You know, a lot of the spins are reused, the heads reused. You know, we were setting it up like a game. Those are all the heads. I mean, someone could literally make a game out of that now. We, we thought, you know, <laughs> we had high hopes for Voltron that someone would want to make it. But it turns out that art, the art in the game isn't the hard part, I find. No. It's the program, you know, it's all, the programming and, you know, making the art look right in the game and all that stuff. Like, making, I feel like ideas and art for games are, there's a dime a dozen don't tell Cody and Andrew that. I have to <laughs> that. Coding and debugging. Yeah, I can imagine. So, no, the idea that it's like, oh, someone would see Voltron and be like, I love it. Can you make, you know, can we just use this to make a game? And I'd be like, and I'd just hand over the flash drive and be like, check, please. And uh, that never happened. But you can see how much quicker I draw this than if I had to do this in Pixel. Cool. chose our, our battles wisely in Pixel. Yeah, it just, and Bob put it nicely, it's just hard to stand out now. There's so many gorgeous pixel artists now that, you know, we can't... I feel like standing out in indie games is a hard part too, you know. We find, I'll find Voltron on YouTube. I'll show somewhere. you YouTube, it's on Spindo TV on the YouTube, but um, Bob will get the whole the whole series for you. There's four episodes, and it goes through each genre, a lot of different genres. Like it's a uh, side scroller, then it's an overhead, then we do a Game Boy Advance one, and we do a bunch of stuff. So the game, There's I love the Game Boy that. part. That was yeah. my favorite part. No, the fourth, the the third and fourth episode, I think I felt like is where we really started to get it down. It just felt like. And, and we got to write the whole story ourselves, so we, it was one of those, we were a yeah. little more attached to the whole thing. And it's one of those clients who just like, just show me, the, like, just just let let us know when it's finished. <laughs> and then when you just hand it in, it's like, it's finished. You're like, perfect. Post into that one. Get a few more drawings done in a couple minutes. I don't know where that AVG intro is. I've seen it in a couple of, he's used it recently on some of the, there was an AVG in last night, right? I no, heard he that, Andrew said I heard that. What did he uh, do? What I do is make them inside GIMP and then trace bitmap with the right settings. Is And that's a pixel art GIMP? Uh, the GIMP is like a Photoshop. Oh, okay. Uh,
No, that that the making the game with the program is, has opened my eyes to what really goes into it. Yeah, it's really it's you have to orchestrate so much, and it's a lot like a, you're making music or a band. You need the right people to be playing the right stuff at the right time. And uh, yeah, when Bob and I had to. Um, when we can't work on blood as often as we can, that's when uh, a lot of times Cody and Andrew will be um, catching up to all the sprites we're making and stuff. So we're constant, you know, there's always, out of five of us, there's always someone working on it almost at all times. And that's really what it takes to make a, even an indie game. It's a, it's a, it's a journey. You have to be prepared to, to work a lot of time for a long time. Oh, I forgot his... Yes, I forgot his... Uh, yeah, my wife doesn't like to hear any idea that a game could have made this long. Uh, well, we're that. also used to making <laughs> film, like, we, yeah. we made flex in, you know, six months, and it just, you know, it's a complete idea, so it's like, the idea, like, spending six months on something is a lot, but it doesn't feel impossible, but, you know, knowing a game could take up where, yeah, we, were, we were talking to people who do it for a living, um, and the guy of the head of the studio told me, he's like, oh no, we spent seven years working on that. <laughs> I was like, and he, you know, he did full time. And just, that's, that's the scary part to me. It's just like, well, you still like something in seven years. Not, I don't think we'll spend seven years on it, but you know, you have to, you have to really commit. And especially with us, it's like sometimes I look back and I'm like, ah, you know, I could have redesigned this character and stuff, but you just sort of have to kind of know when to hold them. No, I remember, like, it was kind of like that in that, um, the documentary with Phil Fish going back in, and, like, he started redoing all the beginning pixels because yeah. he didn't like what he had done. Well, you learn so much just yeah. by doing it, too, you know, that what you. You know, all of a sudden you'll kind of have this eureka moment and want to um, kind of do a, do, do that throughout now. slow this up a little bit so he can really coast into that one. I think that looks better and then we can kind of spread out that a little bit too. Just a slow sort of measured kind of character. And that's also the beauty of Flash, like you can see how easy I just changed the timing. And sometimes to get, even if I wasn't, uh, if I wanted to keep that timing, I would squeeze the keyframes a little closer together. Because I don't like everything on twos, and I don't like everything on ones, and it's also, like, I like a, a combo of it. And that, that always changed. Um, when you're painting a character across the screen, you, I find you always have to shoot it on ones, though, because I don't like the strobing kind of feel. And so, for some reason, animation on ones, at least the stuff we do, I, I'm never a fan of, really. This looks too digital or something. We're gonna close up pretty soon here. Just like the iron first. Oh, uh, 
we done some work with Iron Horse games. Oh no, I think he was talking about oh, the oh. easy client, probably. Oh gosh, uh, it, yes, easy client that's made my a big difference. It, he quick Michael Gordon. If you're listening, teach teach other clients your ways. Gosh, it was so cool. I've never. I. Yeah, we handed in something this afternoon, and I'm just dreading, dreading the next email of why the first, the what we just handed in isn't good enough. I, I, I see an email pop in. I just hope it's something. <laughs> One of my buddies. Um, now that's you know a big problem I have with those bigger kind of clients is people justifying their job on our behest. It's, uh, it's, a we, to put it bluntly, it's not, it's a way, we couldn't run our studio the way they run, the way people run big studios, with just the waste. Like the management, the waste, the, the, pointless meetings, the notes for notes sake, the, you know, the, well, what if we tried this approach? It's, it, you know, automation's a planned, measured thing that once you establish the style and once the script's approved, it's sort of, there's not a lot of wiggle room. Now everyone wants to make a lot of wiggle room. It's not, it, it's not a healthy way to work. And to be frankly, uh, to be frank, it's wasteful. It's a wasteful way to spend spend your money. Do you want to maybe show? I made like a JPEG. If you want to show everybody the other, um, the JPEG of the other magazine option that we were gonna have. Maybe oh yeah, let me show. Do you have that open? Uh, I don't have it open. It's in promotional and the edge. Okay, yeah, we, we did two spreads, let me. It's called option A, it's like JPEG. Okay, is it in Edge or Love? second option that we were going to do, which was just a one page, not a two page one. Let's see, uh, it's kind of the where, where's Waldo thing though. And um, you see we kind of got all the vampires here, we got the, the main baddie up, up top, his his cronies here that protect him, we got the bats, we got the rats. <laughs> the bats and the rats. The bats and the rats. <laughs> um, and uh, what I want to do with the since it's we're kind of going pure vampires, I want to establish that there are like different grades of vampire from the young hatchlings that start off that small to ones that like maybe this was a bodybuilder, this guy right here, the guy pouring out of the ground, uh, to like the more classic vampire right here, to the ones that crawl and all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna have to, it's not just gonna be the one note kind of vampire. Oh wow. My, my youngest son dumped my uh, oldest son's fish tank out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sounds like a good story. Yeah, right? No, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Uh, we also have the uh, shadow vampires here that just kind of allergic to light. And, you know, so we're not going just, you know, regular Bram Stoker, just one kind of guy. We're going to have like different grades and different speeds and different vulnerabilities and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, that one's fun. We might have to post that one yeah. somewhere. I'm going to clean up this last drawing. And we can kind of come to a close here. I want to thank all you guys for joining us again. It's always great to do this. And thanks for joining us on a Thursday. Pretty good turnout for a Thursday, I thought. Um, promotional stuff. We're gonna be in the city tomorrow. If you guys are in New York, 
be sure to stop by and check us out. Uh, June 21st to the 23rd, we have too many games. <clears throat> we have bloodgame.com, which gives everyone an uh, inside look for the stuff that we don't post on social media, so it's a very cool club to be part of, and it's a mailing list, but it's not one of those fan ones that everyone hates. We just put new stuff when we get it, and it probably will be the first place we announce the demo when one that's coming out. And then Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff, where you can see what we've worked on today and be it, and prior. So let me finish this nice. guy. Lord, Lord love the pixel tutorial. Oh, you like that? So if you, oh, if I, got, well, yeah, no, it's it's fun. I if you got years to shave off your life, you too can do it's, pixel. It's, <laughs> It, yeah, well, the thing with that is that was a very carefully planned out kind of move we made with that. We knew we were going to use that character a bunch and and all that stuff. So the majority of the time was just making the, the character sprites. And then the backgrounds and stuff, that was a pain, but it wasn't impossible. So it was just telling a story with just those, um, you know, the 36 sprites we had. That was the tough part. So, all right, let me color this. And then we can come to a close. Just gonna color the eyes, see if it times out well. Go outside, see what he looks like in this hole. Okay, let's see if he lines up. He's drawn, okay. I can live with all that, I think. We're gonna have to. Burning daylight. All right, so, all right guys, well, thanks for joining us again. Uh, we hope to see some of you tomorrow, and keep in touch, keep those questions coming, and we'll be back next Friday at our regular time, and one day we're gonna have to show uh, Bob's After Effects magic, and that might be Blood Free, where we just sort of do something we've been playing with, with a live action, and the After Effects backgrounds and all that stuff. But until then, we'll see you next Friday, and enjoy the weekend and your guys' Friday tomorrow. Bye, guys. See you guys.